In this video, I want to introduce you to the concept of ANOVA through a little example. As you can see, I've got my baseball jersey on today. I'm sporting the fabulous White Sox jersey. And of course, my favorite player on the team, Jermaine Dye. Jermaine Dye hits a lot of home runs, and I love to see it when he hits home runs. But in this video, I'd like to introduce you to the concept of ANOVA through a home run type of environment. These, uh, these are made up data from 12 baseball players um, that I, I randomly assigned, at least in my imagination, to three different groups. One group of four of these baseball players uh, received no injection of steroids per week. Another group received two injections of steroids per week, and another group received four injections of steroids per week. We want to see, well, what is, like, how much uh, can we attribute to this random variation, and how much can we attribute to actually assigning these players to these different groups. That's the idea of ANOVA. I took the liberty of, of taking the mean of all 12 of these home run numbers of these 12 players. That mean turned out to be 30.5. Now you remember from the last video where we talked about r squared and we talked about the sum of squared total. Uh, square those uh, those differences from the means and add them all up for all the observations. We could go ahead and do that. Just go 19 minus 30.5, square it, so on and so forth, 12 times, add it all up. We could also do that within each group for each mean, and we could think about what was left over. Well, it turns out that that has a very close analog to the sum of squares errors. We'll go ahead and add up within that group um, all of the observations, all those squared deviations, and we'll get a sum of squared errors. And then the difference between that, well, that's just going to be the sum of squares for the, uh, for the treatment. And so we can think about it that way. And so that will give us some sums of squares. And as you know, these are all about variance. This tells us about the total variability. This tells us about the unexplained variability. And their difference, the sum of squared treatment, tells us about the explained variability. Uh, I want to introduce you with this example to an ANOVA table. An ANOVA table breaks down our variability um, and some other features, which I'll introduce to you, um, into three groups, really. We've got the treatment variability, the error variability, and the total variability. The treatment plus the error variability in the sums of squares, well, that's going to equal our total variability. And so, we can see that when we actually go ahead and uh, figure out all the math with our sample here, our total variability on this problem is 655. We had 293 left over in our computation. And that means that our treatment, by just guessing the mean of each of these groups, we were able to explain 632 or 362. Now, there's this column in ANOVA tables that is the degrees of freedom column. Now, you may remember that when we estimate the, to the mean using the total variability, 
we have the sample size minus one degrees of freedom. Well, that holds true here as well. Here we have four plus four plus four. We have 12 observations, but we're estimating the mean. Therefore, we have 11 degrees of freedom. Now, in addition to estimating the, the total mean, we have to estimate two other means to actually think about the treatment that we applied here. By estimating the overall, the grand mean, uh, we kind of nail down one of these, but then we have to use up two more degrees of freedom to estimate the two other groups, the means of those two other groups. We have to pin down two more degrees of freedom. Even though there are three groups, because we already estimated the other mean, we use up only two more degrees of freedom. Now that means that we have nine remaining degrees of freedom. Now, I need to introduce you to one last bit of terminology here. It's the mean squares column. All we have to do to get the mean squares is to divide the sums of squares by the degrees of freedom. Sort of a mean amount of sums of squares that are attributable to this, uh, this component of the variance. Um, so if we go ahead and divide 2 into 362, well that one I can actually do. That's 181.9. Well, that's 32.55. And I could go ahead and compute the mean square uh, for the total, uh, but as you would see, this would actually end up being our sample variance. Um, we, uh, we're not really interested in that too much, but just for completeness, let's go ahead and compute it. 655 divided by 11, that's 59.54. So that was our sample variance. But this is our mean squared error, this is our mean squared treatment. Now you may be asking, well, why the heck are we even doing this? Well, it turns out that way off in the background here, we've got a null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that the mu or the mean, the true mean of home runs hit in this group equals the true mean of home runs hit in this group equals the true mean hit in this group. The alternative hypothesis, or alternatively, you could write that as H1, is that there's some difference in these means. This might actually tell us, if we're able to reject this null hypothesis, this tells us that this treatment of giving people more steroids, it looks, it appears to provide more home runs. It appears to uh, make some difference in this outcome. We see a different response. And we could go ahead and look at the means, and if we are able to conclude that there's a significant difference in the uh, mean home runs, well, then we're able to conclude that there appears to be an effect of this particular treatment. And we can test this null hypothesis by computing an F statistic. That's why we have this column here. And this F statistic is just going to be the mean square treatment divided by the mean squared error. So in this case, it would be 181 divided by 32.55. This number ends up being 5.56. And if you remember about the F distribution, to know which F distribution we're dealing with, you need to know the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom. In this case, we have it ready made for us. There are two numerator degrees of freedom, there are nine denominator degrees of freedom. You can go look up in your table. Decide uh, what your critical value is. And so then that is really the usefulness of the ANOVA table. And it really shows you kind of how we can analyze variance and how we can use it to purposefully test meaningful null hypotheses against alternatives.